Andy, ready? Ready. Okay. Welcome to Picks on Pigskin from the PIX11 Sports Department, high above 42nd Street in the very heart of Manhattan. I'm your host, Todd Ehrlich, the executive producer of the PIX11 Sports Department. I'm here with the legendary writer, Gary Myers, who's got to get out of here because he's writing two or three books. Who knows what he's doing? Gary, thanks for coming in. I need to get on that train, so short on the introductions, please. We are, we, you can't do a short introduction of a guy like you with all the stuff you've done in your career. That's a pretty good introduction, to though. I mean, I feel like, I feel like, if anything, you should want that extended. Yes, well, not if it's a taking little time bit. away from you. Oh. We exactly. never take. I, I, I want to hear this introduction. Yes, we would never take time away from Andy. Andy Adler is not only the sports director here, not only the host. Oh, boy. Uh, you yeah, he no. told me, okay, no, I'm you listening. threw the challenge flag, <laughs> not only the host of yeah. the New York Blitz, not only the co-host with the legendary Joe Masseri of Sports Nation, and a host of Play Ball, and the hostess with the mostest, the one, the only, Andy Adler! <laughs> I think after that intro, Andy, I think you're due for oh. a raise. Oh, <laughs> or two. They say yeah. Oh. Or, or give Todd a little something under the table for like a, I'll like take a, a, few, a few extra bucks there. I have a four-year-old. I'll take change. Anything <laughs> else at this point. We're trying, we got a college fund we're looking at. Um, and I did promise this would be 30 minutes or less. So, Joe Masseri, you don't Short, need tight an, introduction. You don't need an go. introduction. You are Joe Masseri. Yes. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. And Joe's idea was a rundown for the show. So I've instituted said rundown. On today's show, the Giants need to be ram tough to win on Sunday against a 4-1 team from L.A. The Jets won't lose this week, which is good because they're on the bye week. We'll look at how they've done so far this year. And we'll also take a look at the fallout from the John Gruden controversy. The article was written by Katie Rossman of the New York Times. Not only a great writer, but a great sister-in-law. Ladies and gentlemen, so we booked her on the show. I went, buttered up my brother. He helped make that happen. I so was wondering how you got her on right. the show. Wow. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't pull big guests like that without help from my brother. She will be on Pix11 Sports Nation Sunday at, at 11 p.m. Yes. On Pix11. After you watch the Sunday Blitz Sunday morning. There you and go. if you want, you can watch some football in between. All right, so let's start with the football in between that you're going to watch. The Giants. Oh, right, boy. So let's start with the big black and blue, which is what I like to call them this week because they are certainly injured. They're one and four. They lost their two most important offensive weapons on Sunday in Dallas. As long as um, Tony got injured as well, four and one Rams are coming to town. What does Judge have to do to keep this team together? Gary Myers. Well, I think he'll be able to keep them together because after the 0-5 start last year, they they went, went up winning six of uh, their last 11 games. But you, you do run the risk of players who've been around for a while going, oh, we're going through this again. So I, I think it's I think it's a tough game for them to win on Sunday, but I think it's an important game because um, they're in the middle of this really tough stretch that we've you know dissected a little bit. And um, listen, they're hopeful that Daniel Jones will be able to play. Um, Saquon Barkley's not going to play, and Kenny Galladay's not going to play, and I think that Tony will play. And as long as he doesn't get thrown out in the first quarter, he can have a really big game. You'd think that Jalen Ramsey would probably get, um, probably move around, or they like the, the term now is he's going to travel with him, right? We used to say, well, he, you know, just uh, he was with him all over the field. Now he's going to travel with him. So I think if there's one player on the on the Giants that's going to draw that kind of attention. It's, it's probably Tony. He got everybody's attention. That's high uh, praise for a rookie. I mean, I know he's coming off a great game, but... Well, you just look at what the other guys... I mean, you don't have to do that with Slayton or with Shepard. Uh, this guy's really explosive. Both of which, it looks like they're going to play yeah, this week, yeah. which helps out a tremendous amount. Yeah, I, I think that um, this was just a small sampling. I mean, he had a lot of yards, 189 yards from Tony. But I think this is just a small sample of, of what he can potentially do. Um, running out of the backfield, jet sweeps, uh, bubble screens, that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, he's he's a, got excellent football instincts. He runs really well, and 
uh, he's elusive. So uh, he's the guy that you think that could really emerge here and give some life to this team. And he played in the AAA of the NFL, the SEC, last year. <laughs> so he, he's, he's up to snuff. Joe. Um, well, depending on what you want, it might not be the AAA if you just want to compare him to the NFC East. Ooh, Ooh. wow. They might have been Ouch. division cha- Alabama might have been division champs in the NFC East. Oh, well, but, they, but they lost to Texas A&M. And I think last the Washington year. football team, no, last weekend. No, no, he's saying no, no, last year. Oh, last year, yeah. The NFC East. NFC least. 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 Yeah. All, right, all, right. all right, so let's get this back on track. Joe, you're good at that. Um, Sterling Shepard was actually off to... A good start. What's it mean to get him and Slayton back for the Giants? You know, I think both of them have a good rapport with Daniel Jones. We obviously saw in week one, I mean, he had the only plays for the Giants. He was the only standout, Sterling Shepard, that is, um, along with Daniel Jones. So uh, I know we won't have Jones back there, but he's familiar with the offense, just giving those options to, well, he may not have Jones back there, still up in the air. Uh, Mike Lennon obviously can use all the help that he can get. Uh, in this one. So if they're going to have a chance, though, I think it's really going to be about defensively stepping up and trying to limit that that Rams offense, which has been explosive, because I don't see any way that they're going to be able to keep up on the offensive side of the ball um, and, and put up a lot of points in this one. So, uh, Andy, um, one quick question for you. Joe Judge came out yesterday and said that they're going to try to get Jones back as he works his way through the concussion protocol. Do you do you feel like we can see him, or is he doing that so that the Rams defense has to prepare for both quarterbacks? I mean, I really hope that that is not the case. It would be premature to bring Daniel Jones back. We saw him on the field, and when he got hurt, you that was could, a scary that sight. was a scary moment. To bring him back would be a big mistake. So I've got to hope that Coach is doing exactly that and just I'm just trying to make sure the Rams are not prepared. So, Gary, you're old. <laughs> my, <laughs> that Mike, is the segue of the season yeah, so far. Pretty good. Yeah, thank you. Mike Glennon is clearly no Jeff Hostetler. That is clear. But you saw firsthand when Jeff came in for Phil Sims, and Hostetler was saying that year that if he didn't get more playing time, he was considering retiring. But he went on to win a Super Bowl. What is a realistic expectation for the ceiling for Mike Glennon. How good can he be? I'm not talking to you anymore. <laughs> Joe, can you handle that question, please? Uh, and I, can you direct all questions to Gary? We're not on speaking terms. Absolutely. Gary and I uh, will will take this question together. Yes, here. oh, good. No. Yes, Joe. What kind of thing? <laughs> <laughs> Gary, what do you think that Mike Glennon's ceiling is this week against a very talented Rams defense? That's a good question, by the way. Yeah. I like it. And uh, I'm trying to think of a good analogy and being clever in my in my mind right now, but um, I'm just going to settle for his ceiling is really low. And he's bounced around the league a bunch. And um, I, I think he can keep things respectable, meaning he's not going to throw necessarily go out and throw four interceptions, I don't think. You're on the record of that now. Yeah. <laughs> we keep receipts. If, if, he, if he plays. Um, but uh, Mike, Mike Glennon is... If, 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 if Daniel Jones is out for a while, which it doesn't appear he's going to be, um, with the Giants' schedule, I don't, I don't see Mike Glennon being able to salvage uh, this season. Um, I mean, Hostetler was like the great unknown of that Giant team. I mean, he was actually a, you know, a really good player that nobody really knew about. And then he got a chance to play when Phil got hurt late in the 1990 season. And, hey, and Phil has even told me, you know, you can't take it for granted because of Hostel, because Hostel won um, all those playoff games in the Super Bowl that the Giants would have done the same thing with Phil because Hostel's skill set was so much different. Um, if you remember that NFC Championship game against San Francisco that year, uh, Jeff's mobility won the game, and Phil didn't have that. So No, he didn't. Um, but in, in this case, the, the talent gap between Daniel Jones and uh, and Mike Lennon is, is, is pretty significant, and... Um, I, I think he's a good guy to have on the team because he can come in for short spurts like he did in Dallas last week, and he wasn't the reason they lost the game, and the defense was the reason they lost the game. So, Andy, Mike Glennon, if he plays, 
or Daniel Jones, which you're concerned if he plays. Andy, you're really young, aren't you? <laughs> Not as young as Joe. I mean, I... They're I, nip and tuck. <laughs> Aren't you guys, like, within well, six months? I I don't know. I can't. I never asked a Joe, lady Joe, I was going to say, Joe, Joe knows better than to, like, ever ask. Uh, okay. I wasn't asking. I was actually <laughs> Well, assertive. how can I tell you if I'm within well, six months? I just months. figured you know. You know everything. No, I don't That's know. why you sit in that chair on this <laughs> podcast. Why don't we um, have, like, a secret thing here where we each write down how old we think Andy is? That's I'm like not doing that. Terrible. Well, that's that not, is, I am not. Right my there. wife and mother raised me better than that. I am not doing that. <laughs> but that's that suggest- I'm not doing. File that suggestion in the suggestion. All I know, right. file all I know, right. over here I am suggestion. smart enough. If we ever do you something, are. I will come in with the lowest number. Oh, well, the three of us. Like, I, you know I'm what? still not it's doing like, that. It's like the price is right. Like, you go a little over and you're just screwed. Dead. Like, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Like it's One over. dollar. Like One it's, dollar. Like, it's over. <laughs> so what I was trying to allude to is last week the Giants' <laughs> offensive line gave up two sacks, six um, quarterback hits, and they lost a quarterback, as you may recall. Um, they're facing the Rams' defensive line. Aaron Donald last week. Two sacks. He's got four in the year. Might be the best um, rusher in the league. I think he is. How tough, I do too. How tough of a spot is this for Glennon or or DJ? I'm shaking my head. It's going to be brutal. This is going to be a tough game. I feel like it was going to be tough regardless of who their opponent is. But the fact that it's the Rams, the fact that Aaron's coming in, this is going to be one of those look away situations. Yeah. So, Joe, last week the Giants' uh, offensive line looked a lot like their defense. It was just a sieve. They gave up 44 points to the Cowgirls. The Rams' offense is as good as Dallas, at least arguably. So for the Giants to win, it looks like they would have to outscore the Rams this weekend. And with as injured as they are, is there any chance they can do that? No. No. There's no way they're going to outscore the Rams this weekend, and especially with all the injuries that they have there. And I actually think that this is like the perfect storm for the Giants right now because not only might they be looking at a backup quarterback, but the recipe to beat the Rams, right? They went in and they beat them with a backup quarterback in Colt McCoy. I feel like that was, was that last year, two years ago, when they had that, that oh, surprise man. win? Colt McCoy won in Seattle last year. With Seattle, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, Seattle. You're on the right coast. I know, and right division, sort of. but wrong team. Yeah, the left coast. But the uh, the in this one though, they don't even have their running back. That was a low scoring game, right? In yeah. that they managed to win. And so, in order to do that, you figure you play ball possession, right? Keep the ball away from the offense. They're missing Saquon Barkley for this one. That's going to be difficult. They haven't run the ball well all season. So when you add that all up, and then throw in the fact that. This Rams offense has looked like the greatest show on turf since Matt Stafford came over here. It's it's been incredible. Cooper Cup is 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 the leading wide receiver MVP candidate right now, according to all the sports books out there. So they have so many weapons on that offensive side of the ball, and Sean McVay is the wonderkind over there uh, for all my Ted Lasso fans. Uh, for the Rams, and I just think this is going to be trouble for the Giants. I haven't watched that show yet. You need to get on it's, it. Everyone keeps telling me it's watching. fantastic. Well, Joe's going to give me Only his if, password if yes. you want it after me. <laughs> Pass that around. You're good. You? Yeah, no, okay, yeah, you're call. next. You got to get a box of tissues when you watch the show. Oh, really? Well, yeah. you're sensitive, I'm a sap. Joe. I'm a Ever since you had kids, you like Warren. You cry because of that child? Oh, it's really. By the way, show. your face, Gary, of just like absolute disgust. The judgment. The <laughs> judgment here. I mean, listen. If Dan Campbell can cry after a loss. I can cry when Ted Lasso tugs at my heartstrings, all right? I've only watched three episodes, and I have... Gary's like, I feel nothing. There's been no no, jerky moments. No, you get into it. you got to get a relationship with the characters. And I'm not talking about all-out bawling. You know, that single tear that comes down, the little sniffles. Okay, so big picture. you weren't eating some garlic or something? Maybe. So speaking (laughs) of relationships, um, Joe Judge, by by all observation, is a no-nonsense guy and was doing a good job getting everybody to buy in. So the question is, Kadarius Tony throwing a punch, is that an indictment of Kadarius, or is that an, is an indictment that Joe is losing his grip on the team? Um, I'm talking to you again, so I'll answer that question. Oh, we're back on speaking. Oh, only because I really like that question. Oh, thank you. I, I wrote it myself, actually. It's right here on the paper. Listen, you, you can't control the actions of every player. You can emphasize to them what's acceptable and not. But when you get in an emotional moment on the field, a player is not thinking, oh, my coach told me not to do this. I would like to think that if it was a really close game, 
and I don't remember what the score was at that point, but it wasn't close, that Tony would have controlled himself for his teammates, would have made sure to pull him away, and because he was their best player at that point. Um, I, I don't think he'll do it again. I, I would think at some point during the many talks that Judge has with his team, he tells them fighting is unacceptable. But if this is such an emotional game that sometimes, you you know, when you feel you're being wronged on the field, there's a lot of cheap shots that happen under the pile there. Yeah. And, you know, we don't really know exactly what set them off. It could have been something verbal. But um, I've seen far worse. Football fights are meaningless. The guy's got their helmets on. You can break your hands. The dumbest thing in the world to, for a wide receiver who needs his hands yeah. to be punching somebody in the helmet with those hands. Just, I remember... But I was going to say, it just shows how out of control he was, right? Like yeah. how much his, he wasn't thinking. But this isn't the first time we've seen it. I don't mean from him specifically, but in the NFL. I remember, I think it was Andre Risen and Deion Sanders well, one day what, before what a game were just taking haymakers at each what other. What about Odell Beckham on. and Josh Norman? There you go. Right. Yes. So we've seen this before. Oh, that was all day. That was yeah. a slugfest for, for yes, four all quarters. day. Yeah. All day. Speaking of all day, it's time to make predictions. Can the Giants keep up with the Rams all day? Andy, prediction time. Unfortunately, no. I would love to see this team have the bounce back game. I'd love to see a great performance. I'd love to see a lot of healthy players. Unfortunately, we're not going to see any of that. No way. Too much firepower with the Rams. And they're coming into this one on extra rest uh, because they played the Thursday night game. Recipe for disaster here for the Giants. I'm going 34-13 Rams. Ouch. I mean, I think the main thing the Giants have going for them, and I'm not sure what the Rams travel plans are, but, you know, traditionally the teams that travel west to east, you know, have a tough time because uh, is this a 1 o'clock? I don't even know. Is this a 1 o'clock game? It is. I'll yeah, look, look it up for me, Joe. Google uh, machine, Joe. Um, you it know, is. especially is it 1 o'clock? Yep. All right, so it's, it's like body time, 10 o'clock in the morning. So maybe they're coming in Friday instead of Saturday to try to get acclimated to the time change. But that's about all the Giants have going for them in this game because of all the injuries. Um, I think, you know, when, when Jones went out last week, I think it was 10-10, or it was about to be 10-10 because they finished off that drive. Um, they, they were hanging tough with the Cowboys, and then it was just so much attrition that was going on. But to go into this game without Saquon, the Galladay part I don't think is uh, as crucial because of Tony stepping up, and Galladay really hadn't been doing all that much except in the New Orleans game. But... This is, a, this is almost like a worst-case scenario for the Giants, playing a, a high-powered team with a defense not playing anywhere near like they did last year and all these injuries on offense that the only chance the Giants would have had in a game like this is to be able to score with them in a high-scoring game, and I don't think they're capable of doing that. And one, one thing, though, I do just want to point out, because we talked about Tony earlier and his judge losing control, let's not forget... The Giants were fighting in the preseason, right? And I think Tony was in the middle of that, and the whole team had to run gassers, and the team kind of got behind him. After the game, there were some reports that there was another punch thrown by the Cowboys, hit Evan Ingram right. in the face. The way they have responded to that in all of the interviews is very interesting to me because I actually think that this moment, the Tony incident and the fight with the Cowboys, could actually be a galvanizing moment for them and something to come around. So... I just don't think they have the horses in this one, uh, and it's just a bad matchup for them. But I expect them to come out fighting in this one. So um, literally. Wh- literally, no, not literally this time. Oh, Figuratively not. this time. <clears throat> I prefer the literal aspect. <laughs> By the way, that's a little concerning that 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 this is a pattern with Tony. That this is something that he's not able to control his emotions because an isolated incident. Okay, but if this is something that he does often and he's not able to in any way control it. That could be that could be a little disconcerting. Okay. However, the Gavinized Giants win fourteen thirteen. Stop. I stay consistent. <clears throat> so let's let's now turn you have to no credibility. What do you mean? <clears throat> why do I have no why do I have no Four, credibility? 14, 14, 14 13, 13 Giants. Giants could hold them to thirteen points. Thirteen points this weekend. I have no credibility. Is betting legal in New York yet? No, no New oh. Jersey. I, I, I know one degenerate that actually lives in New York, drove to New Jersey to make a bet. You only and know one? Back. I only know one. Oh, you got to hang out with me and my I, friends more. I'll oh, I do? You. Yeah. So you know more. I know more. I, I have one. <laughs> um, do so, I know him? Oh, yeah. 
So let's very let's good looking. Do very, I look well? Uh, yeah, you just got a haircut this week. So now <laughs> let's take a look at the let's let's break down I the like broken your down. Oh, your hair looks great, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> it wasn't me, but thank you so much. It went last night. That person only has to go to Connecticut now, which is most much closer to his house. Oh, is that true? So that works no, no, out. No bridges to go over. Oh, good. Over. It's never a bridge too far for a guy like you. So let's break down the broken down Jets as we head into the bye week. Zach Wilson, they, he does lead the NFL in something. Sadly, it's interceptions. Um, Joe, what do you think about his progress so far? Um, all right, I have to throw this in because it just came to my mind. I, I think that the Jets' offense has been more delayed than Southwest flights. Right? It felt good and timely. I had to get it in there. He's been great in the second. He's been very good in the second half. But they can't get – I don't know what it is. If he, he said it this week. I think he's going – into his head too much, trying to remember the script and go through the exact motions that the coaches want him to in practice. And I think he needs to be a little bit more free-flowing. At the start of the game, when they have the scripted plays, he's not making the throws. I think he's in his head a little bit too much. His word was robotic. As the game goes on and they get in the flow of it, you have to make a big play. He's looked better. Um, And so I think that I still see signs from him that he's going to be a really good NFL quarterback. Um, but he needs to cut down the mistakes. You can't lead the league in nine interceptions and expect your team to win. Andy? You know, it's one of those things where when I look at Zach, in some ways I sort of relate to him in that I look at him and I'm like, okay, when I'm trying to be too robotic, when I'm doing what I'm doing, and I'm try- I have all these, and I'm, okay, I'm supposed to do it like this, and I, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. But if he's out there, and I call it dancing, just doing what he's supposed to do, he knows the game, he's trusting his instincts, he's out there doing what he knows how to do, then he is really capable. And we're seeing that in the second half, and I think he's right. It's a little bit of like a paralysis by analysis, and that's why I think he's not able to perform specifically in that first half. So, yeah, I think it started with uh, Bill Walsh, where they started scripting Mm -hmm. plays. And it seems to be pervasive in the NFL. Most teams are successful with it. Why are the Jets not? They have exactly zero points in the first quarter this year. You know, the really funny thing about this is that Adam Gase, who's a horrible head coach. That always <laughs> comes up, by the way. Somehow it's true. Yeah. It always ends up being like, yeah. But he actually scripted well because... I don't know what the streak was, but the Jets scored on their first possession. Forget about the first quarter. They were scoring their first possession a bunch of games in a row, and then they didn't score the rest of the game, Mm. Um, which is just as detrimental as not scoring in the first quarter and maybe scoring a little bit the rest of the game. I I don't know. Those should be the plays that they've practiced the most and the most comfortable with and um, and ready to roll right out of the box. And the, the fact that they're not is something I'm sure they're going to be self scouting over these two weeks. Um, what Wilson did say, I, I, I do think he, he, I think he had a line, he's just got to let a rip. And absolutely right. He's, he's aiming the ball. And you can see that on some of those easy throws that he's, he's missing. You know, he's throwing it in the dirt or throwing over a guy's head or throwing wide. Or hitting his lineman in the back of the head. That was bad. Um, I just think he's got to relax a little bit. He's probably so amped up at the beginning of the game. That um, I mean, Mike Holmgren always used to talk about Brett Favre at the beginning of the game, that he got himself so worked up that he'd be airmailing these passes ten yards over receiver, wide over receivers' heads on the sideline. I mean, it wouldn't come close, and he just had to get Brett to settle down. And I see some of that now in in Wilson that he just he needs to get into a rhythm earlier. So Joe, they've been pretty conservative. Um, when they start games with these scripted plays? Do you think that they'll either A, let it rip more, or B, do you think that maybe it's time to give Zach more say in the scripted Hmm. plays to go with what he's comfortable with or give him the chance to audible out of things? That's what I was going to say. I I think maybe you have to, because Robert Sala, his line that he's gone to a bunch of times has been sometimes it's dictated by the coverage. So I think that if you're stuck in a play and you're not giving him the freedom to change it at the lines, I mean, these scripts have become a lot more complicated since the days of Bill Walsh. And sometimes they are going in with two or three plays at the line when he sees the defense, he's checking it. I don't know how much that's happening with the Jets and their rookie quarterback in Zach Wilson. But I do think having at least two options when you go up there might be uh, a benefit to him because at least then he has 
the decision of the play that they're going into, even if it is two that he's choosing. I, you know, watching the games, I think that he, I, I think I've seen him audible, uh, you know, every now and then. Um, you know, that's a lot to put on the plate of a, of a rookie quarterback is to give him a play in the huddle and then two more options at the line of scrimmage. I mean, it, it is a learning curve here for him. Um, it, as far as giving him more say in the play calls or in the script, there's not one play in the game plan that he's not comfortable with. Right. I mean, that's just how it works. The coordinator will sit down with him, which plays you like this week? And then, okay, here's some others I'm thinking about. How do you feel about that? No, I don't like that, you know, against this coverage. They throw it out. So he's totally familiar and on board with every play that's in the game plan. And then the script, I'm sure that uh, Michael Floor is going over it with them because they're, they're practicing the script in practice. They're going over the script in practice. It's not like he hands in the script 10 minutes before kickoff and he goes, these are the 10 plays I picked out. Turns out the Jets only need three of those plays. Right. <laughs> and then right. the drive is over. But you yeah. know what, actually, Todd, I, I actually think, though, when you said, should they open it up, I actually think they should get more conservative, and I'm using air quotes around that word, because I think the defenses to start the game are giving them stuff underneath, too, right? They're kind of saying, all right, make these throws. Let's see if he can beat us death by a thousand cuts without making a mistake when it's a rookie quarterback. With that being said, I would like to see them, one, run the ball a little bit more, because I feel like they've been behind the sticks a lot. And two, they can get Elijah Moore involved, involved in the offense. We saw what Kadarius Toney did it, it last week for the Giants. That's kind of what Elijah Moore was supposed to be doing for the Jets when they drafted him uh, in, in the offseason there and what he was doing throughout camp. And they haven't gotten the ball into his hands with those bubble screens, with those well, you know, sweeps the problem enough. Is, is that uh, Jamison Crowder is, yes, is a slot. Yes, it's very crowded. And, and, and so is... Elijah Moore, that's his best And spot. so is Braxton Berrios. So there's well, a lot of worried about him. There. He's, Braxton Berrios is not, I mean, he catches the ball, but he's not a real playmaker. Uh, wait a minute. I think I made that comment about a wide receiver, and I got called out for it last week that, yes, he catches the ball. He's a possession receiver. Yes. I agree with you, though. But these, these slot receivers have become more than possession Agreed. receivers. Now they've become a huge weapon. And they're going to have to move him inside. This is definitely Crowder's last year with the Jets. I didn't even I thought they were going to trade him, uh, and they still might trade him before the deadline on November second. Um, Let me ask you this: How many slots are there? One usually you play two wide in one slot. Right, but literally on both sides of the field, theoretically, I haven't seen an NFL team go with two slot receivers. Oh yeah, and when they the go to four plays, wides, that's what they that's, do. Right, that's that's the only scenario right where you're going to have two slot receivers anyway is when you have four wide. Yeah. But I feel like with the emergence of the slot receiver and the gadgets and trick plays, I think there's go- it won't be long before we see that. More four wide sets, spread it out even more, and get these guys involved, especially when they're your best players, right? They're your most talented athletes in a lot of cases. Yeah, I, I think what's really important for the Jets to do with Wilson, and I'm not saying they're not doing this, and maybe he just needs to be better executing it, they have to find them some easy completions early to get him into a rhythm, to give him some confidence, um, and but but they they have been doing. It. He missed a lot of easy throws early in the game against the Falcons in London. So they have been trying that. Uh, Eli always used to talk about that. You know, finding completions out on the field. It was such an interesting term that he. It was the first time I ever heard anybody any quarterback ever describe it like that. You know, I just got to go find completions, and that's what Wilson has to do. I mean, there's, there's usually somebody open on every play. The quarterback just has to find them, and that's to me that was the downfall of Sam Donald with the Jets. He didn't see the field well. And he still doesn't see the field well. Wilson sees the field much better. He's just going to make better throws. So Coach Hall has been upbeat and he said he's seeing progress. But they're one in four. So Andy, are you seeing the same progress he's seeing? No. I'm not. I feel like we've seen, specifically when it comes to Zach, because that's there's been these glimpses of progress and then quickly retraction and that's that's not what you want to see from your rookie but at the same time I allow a little bit of grace you know rookie quarterback rookie coach uh everyone's sort of still gelling and finding their way so there is that there is sort of that grace Greg Buttle he would not get (laughs) we we were asking him it was like okay give us a grade give us some kind of definitive something and 
uh, we, we couldn't get that. He said incomplete. So you had to give the grade. I would give the Tune grade. Tune in Sunday morning to hear Andy's <laughs> grades of the Jets. That's right. I mean, look, you know, so I, so I think instead of saying incomplete, I'm going to say allowing grace, but know that progress has not been consistent. Gary Myers, one player, who will be the most improved Jet at the end of the year? Denzel Mims. Mm. Joe? Quincy Williams. Ooh, Andy? Mm. I like that answer. I like that answer of Quincy because I feel like, A, I root for him. And I, I think also he's someone who has that ability. And we just, he has, it hasn't completely materialized yet. Okay. Since we don't have a game, uh, the question is how many wins will the Jets have at the end of the year? Start with Andy. Mm. <laughs> Three. Oof. Five. Wow. You know, I don't, I didn't want to repeat the one that you said, but I agree with you on five. That's what I was thinking. You know, five and 12 in a, in a top five draft pick. And then they also have Seattle's pick and they're rooting really hard for Geno Smith to fall on his face in Seattle so that they can, um, Seattle's pick moves up and they can have two really high picks. So I, of course, disagree with all of you. I'm going with six to keep people <laughs> listening to the show. Um, so I like that, the optimism. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're going to start calling him Homer Simpson. Pod. There we go. <laughs> Listen, I have no problem with that. Uh, one of us has got to keep the listeners listening, and you guys are all realists. All right, so quickly in finishing up, since that finishes up, the Jets and Giants, um, Gary Myers uh, with the John Gruden controversy, this is a country of second chances. Where we ev we give everybody a second chance. Would any team give Gruden a chance to lead men? And would any network give Gruden a chance to come on as a broadcaster? I, I find it very hard to believe that he'll ever work in either one of those industries. Again, basically because he offended so many different groups of people. And um, I, I just don't see any coming back from that. You know, especially what he said is as far as being a leader in the locker room, uh, you know, the derogatory comments he made about gay people and, you know, what he said about DeMar Smith, who's African-American. Um, you know, the locker room is made up at least 70 percent of African-American players. And uh, although when that was the only email that was out there, you saw a lot of the black players on the Raiders have his back. Um the stuff that came out about gay people and, and women and the commissioner, it was just... I, listen, I know that these were private emails that he never would have any, said any of this stuff publicly, but now that we know this is how he thinks, there's, there's no way a, a team could bring him in as a leader of men in a locker room and, and then also sell it to the fan base who... He insulted such a large percentage of the fan base with the things that he's saying. As far as uh, a network, he, he's done. I mean, guys, he would have been fired from, any, from ESPN if this stuff, stuff came out. So um, they might even be more sensitive than um, the teams are. Um, no, I, I think he's done. I, I don't know. He's probably got a lot to offer in terms of maybe preparing players for the draft, quarterback, stuff like that. So maybe he gets, stays involved that way. But definitely a, a, a job that's not in the public eye. Um, Joe, uh, last last question. Seeing Daniel Jones stumbling on the field, I know you have kids. Would you let your kids play football? Flag football? No, I, I wrestle with this all the time because uh, I think about the values that this game teaches you, even if you're not going to play it at a high level, and sports in, in general when it comes to these team sports. Um can you get those benefits without having this full contact? Absolutely. And especially when we talk about youth football and brain development and all of the um, aggravated impact of these injuries at such a young age that it's harder and harder to, to justify um, kids playing football uh, at a young age. Long term, though, I mean, seeing that it, for any person, it, it's... It's something that's difficult to stomach, but I, I don't think it's going to go away um, because we still have boxing, right? We have MMA. So the entertainment value um, of what people are watching is still there. And while some people look away at a car crash, others stop to watch, right? And, and you have that. So 
you get both sides of it, um, the financial impact, and they're compensated well financially for it. I mean, it, it's it's the reason quarterbacks get paid as much as they do. But uh, as Robert Sala said earlier this year, it's not easy to watch somebody getting knocked around like a pinata. So as a parent, I would not let my kid play youth football uh, at, from a tackle standpoint for sure. But injuries are also going to happen with sports. It's part of the the price of playing sports, and you have to be willing to accept some of them, whether it's a sprained ankle, a concussion, uh, or or whatever it might be. So I want to end the show on an optimistic note, uh, so that eliminates Joe and Gary. (laughs) We're going to go with Andy to finish the show. Andy, give us the most optimistic one point for each team at the end of the season for the Giants and for the Jets. Okay, optimistic. I would say Daniel Jones, before he got hurt, is looking like an elite quarterback. If he can continue this, he will be an elite quarterback in the NFL, and that gives a lot of hope to the Giants. Saquon needs to get healthy. The injury was not as bad as initially thought. So there is hope there, and this team can gel, and there is hope for the future. For the Jets, I would say Zach Wilson, uh, there is hope for the future there as well. Uh, And he is someone who just needs to get his footing, start trusting his instincts, let him dance out there. It's time to let it rip. Nice. And that wraps up another episode of Picks on Pigskin in under 36 minutes and Gary Myers is going to make his train. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening everybody.